Hi, my name is Lavinia. This is Peter. Welcome to Games Made Easy. Today, I'm very happy to teach you and give you some tips on how to play Libertalia Winds of Galecrest, designed by Paola Mori and published by Stonemaier Games. I like how all the players start with the same cards to play, and as the game evolves, each player develops its own strategy to win. It's a one to six player game, but at five or six players, Libertalia is as cutthroat as any pirate game should be. If you enjoy this video, consider subscribing and clicking the like button and the bell to get notified when I post new videos. It helps a lot. In the world of Galecrest, you play a captain commanding a crew of 40 sky pirates represented by this deck of cards. You set sail on the winds in search of adventure, treasure and glory, and competing with other players with just the same crew. Each day the fleet lands on a different island, where you send a crew member to collect your share of the loot, hoping they'll return to boost your wealth and party strength. The game takes place over three voyages, with the first voyage being four days, the second five and the third six days. At the end of the third voyage, all the gold and loot is tallied, and the player with the most points, the richest pirate, wins the game. To set up the game, start by placing the board in the middle of the table and pick a side. You have the calm side and you have the stormy side. But for your first few games, I recommend going for the calm version. <laughs> Today I'll explain a five player game. The setup is the same for three to six players, but a little bit different for two players and solo games. For the first voyage, randomly place loot tokens equal to the number of players for four days. Then each player picks a color and collects all its player components in that color, which will be the crew, the chest and the graveyard. This area will represent your ship. The deck of 40 cards represents the crew. All players have the same deck. Make sure all players keep their deck in order and do not shuffle it as it makes the game faster. Put your chest at zero and place it in front of you. Place your graveyard board face up in front of you. The space in front of you on the table is your ship. The island is this section on the main board. This is the reputation track. Randomly place all the reputation tokens on this track and distribute the amount of gold corresponding to each player. You use all the reputation tokens. It doesn't matter how many players are playing, you always use all six. Gain doubloons equal to the number shown on the reputation track. Everyone should be able to see at all times how many doubloons you have. Now you're ready to start playing. The first player will shuffle the deck and at the start of each voyage, we'll pick six cards. All the other players will pick the same cards. Now that everyone has the six cards they need for the voyage, they can start playing each day at a time. Start by picking one card from your hand you want to play that day. Once the players have picked their card, you place it face down, you wait until everyone is ready, and then you reveal at the same time. The cards are placed on the island, this track, in ascending order from left to right. If cards have the same number, they are ranked matching the position of the players on the reputation track. So players with lower reputations have their cards placed further left. Keep in mind that during the game, you can move reputation up or down. When you gain reputation, either with a barrel or some cards, you move the token to the right, keeping the other tokens in their respective order. If you lose reputation, you move towards the left. If you're already at the end of the track and need to gain or lose more reputation, then either gain or lose doubloons accordingly. Now let's look at the cards that we've placed on the island track board. They'll be activated in three phases, daytime, dusk and night. During the daytime phase, resolve the cards with the sun icon, starting with the leftmost and proceeding to the right. Only activate the cards with that icon and follow the instructions of what the card does and move to the next card. For example, nothing for these two bar keeps. This bodyguard discards all the saber and hook tokens of this day. So here he gains four doubloons for these two sabers. There's nothing left for this bodyguard and this armor doesn't activate during the day. Once daytime is finished, we will proceed with dusk. But this time it will be the other way around. We will start with the rightmost card and move all the way to the left. If you still have a card on the island, then you will take the following three steps. One, you'll gain a loot token if there's any left for the current day, unless your character says otherwise. Two, if your character or the newly gained loot token has a dusk ability, like a barrel or a saber, you activate that ability. Three, if your character is still on the board, place it in front of you, it's now on your ship. So here the armorer takes the chest. He can't use his dusk ability as the bodyguard took all the sabers during the daytime. So he just goes back to his ship. 
The white bodyguard takes the barrel and gains one reputation, but instead gains one doubloon as he's already at the end of the track and goes back to his ship. The blue bodyguard has no choice but to take the relic and goes back to his ship. The two barkeeps collect nothing and also go back to their ship. Once we're done with dusk, then we proceed with the night. All players can resolve this at the same time. If you have characters in your ship with night abilities, activate them. If you have more than one, you pick in which order you want to activate them. For example, this barkeep gains one doubloon and the armor gains one doubloon for each hook and saber. In this case, there's only a saber. And this freed prisoner gains one doubloon thanks to the armorer. A cool thing about the night effect is that as long as your character remains in your ship, it will continue to activate at the end of each day. This can be very powerful. Now, once the night phase is finished, you will play the next day just like you did the previous. You pick up a new card from your hand, then you're going to resolve the daytime and dusk abilities, pick up new loot tokens and resolve the night effects. If it's the end of the last day, then that's the end of the voyage and you'll take the following steps. Activate all the anchor abilities of the characters and relevant loot tokens with an anchor symbol. Here the two chests gain 10 doubloons and the two maps are worth 12 doubloons thanks to the explorer. Now that we've seen what all the icons are, I'll explain what each loot token does depending on whether you play the stormy, the calm side or the uncharted option. Each chest token will give you five doubloons at the end of the voyage. With the hook, you can keep one character from your ship for the next voyage instead of sending it to the graveyard. If not, you gain two doubloons. The barrel gave you one reputation when you picked it up. At the end of the voyage, it also gives you one doubloon. When you pick up a saber during dusk, you discard one of the characters from the island. If you're ever instructed to discard a card, then you place it face down on your graveyard. If you have a relic at the end of the voyage, you lose three doubloons. Try to use it with the necromancer the amulet is pretty standard and gives you three doubloons. And finally, the map works when you have a few of them. With two tokens, you gain seven doubloons and with three maps, you gain 12. On the stormy side, everything takes on a darker tone. Now you increasingly need to see what other players are collecting and balance even more the synergies between your characters and the loot tokens available. This side of the chest still gives you doubloons, but you'll gain even more if you have map tokens. The hook is now a negative dusk ability. The stormy side of the barrel lets you gain even more reputational doubloons than the sunny side. The saber lets you attack one of your neighbor's ship, that's the players on your left or your right around the table. With this relic, you lose less, but you lose every night. The worse your reputation is, the more doubloons you'll make with this amulet. And finally, this map scores doubloons based on how many your opponents also have. After you've played a few games, you can move on to uncharted maps. Take these seven cards, shuffle them and place them randomly for a mix and match of stormy and calm effects. One more thing to keep in mind, although for most abilities you can play them in the order you want, you can never game the order to have fewer than zero doubloons. So here you cannot lose six first. You first need to gain the 10 before you lose the six. Also during the voyage, Whenever you gain or lose doubloons, you will use the coins. Do not touch the chest that is only used at the end of each voyage. At the end of each voyage, you add up all your doubloons, add them to the dial. Now that they are in your chest, you can never lose them. Return the coins you gained in that voyage to the supply. Then discard your loot tokens and those unclaimed back to the bag. Send the characters in your ship to the graveyard, unless it says otherwise. If you still have characters at the end of the first and second voyage, then you keep them. That way, the hand for the next voyage will be slightly different than the other players. Now the first player picks a new set of six cards for the second voyage and add them to those you kept from the previous voyage. Place new loot tokens for each day, still one per player for each day, but five days for the second voyage. At the end of the sixth day of the third voyage, the game ends and you'll resolve it the same way you did the previous two voyages. Players compare the value of their chest, the richest player wins. In case of a tie, it will be the player with the highest reputation that is declared the winner. Now, my tips to win at Libertalia are, if you can, try to get a high anchor character on your ship early on, it will pay off. 
It's very frustrating to have characters kicked out of the island before they can act. Try not to lose important ones. This is a game where you benefit greatly from card combinations. Find some favorite ones as you learn more about the game. Plan which card you'll want to play first or last. Also, which card you may want to keep for the next voyage. It's a brutal game and other pirates are there to get you. Try to remember what dangerous cards your opponents still haven't played. We all play the same cards, we all see what loot is for the taking, what's the reputation. So anticipating correctly what others will play is how you'll win this game. So that's how you play Libertalia Winds of Galecrest. It's a fun game, ideal for players who want to have a solid go at each other for about an hour. And I think the more players there are, the merrier it gets. If you've enjoyed this video, like and subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, consider supporting me on Patreon. The link is right here. We'll make more games easy soon. Bye now.